Cool. So welcome to Landlord Society. It's our second episode. Again, we're here with myself, Patrick J. Galerio, and then our awesome friend here, Denzel Sullivan. Today, we're actually going to be talking about mistakes. So today's episode is on the mistakes. Um, so we'll kind of get started. Did you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first, Denzel? Um, hmm. Well, when we're talking about mistakes, I guess we can, like, because there's definitely a lot of mistakes that have, uh, that I've made. Um, I mean, nothing where we're losing crazy money or anything. Well, actually, we did on one. Uh, but I guess I'll just start off with a with a mistake that I made, and it was it was something where I was still kind of new um, to real estate investing, and that would be so. What happened was uh, I had a private lead come through one of my marketing just one of my marketing streams and you know i went and met met with the seller we negotiated a price and at the time it was kind of like i think this was probably in around end of may early june um and we negotiated the price and i got it under contract um the sellers were were happy i was happy um and there was about so we picked it up for 192 and we at the time that particular product could have sold on the market easily for like at least $340,000. And I had it under contract for 192. um, And it probably only needed like 30,000 worth of work. So all into that, what are we at? Let me use my calculator here. So 192 plus 30,000. So we're in it for just under 225 grand. and yeah, like I said, we could have sold it for at least 340000 So I guess in this sense, I missed out on about $118,000 uh, worth of just profit. I guess it, w- it would definitely would have been a flip. Um, and yeah, you know, I guess what happened was, so when I initially tied up the contract, we, or I told the sellers that we were going to, I was going to come by with a partner later that month Um, And I never actually ended up following up with them to make that meeting happen because, you know, I had a bunch of projects this summer um, happening at one time. And what happened was I just failed to follow up. And then so as we got closer to the possession date, um, the sellers were just like, hey, yeah, you know what? I don't think we want to sell anymore. Um, And we're going to stay in the house a little while longer. And yeah, they, you know, me being, there was a little bit of uh, other things involved. Like I knew who the family was and I knew who the, 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 their kids and stuff like that. And I'm actually friends with them. And it just would have been a big thing if I made it a big deal. And so I actually just said, okay, you know what? And I walked away from that one. But had I closed sooner, had I stayed on top of that deal, you know, I would, this, I know I probably, this wouldn't even be a story. It'd be a different story where I made like a bunch of money, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's uh money's in the follow-up, right? And yeah, the projects going on. It's really easy to just forget or not follow up. Um, Absolutely. It's like even with that contract, right? Like you mentioned, you could have, but you would have been in the right to be like, hey, I'm buying this house because um, it is on contract. However, like you said, we are in a people business. Um, so it's like, yeah, you might have missed out on a couple tens of thousands of dollars, but you get the relationship, right? Like it's. Oh, yeah, for sure. It, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, just another thing, too, like, you know, it, it is a, it was a mistake, but I definitely know I learned my lesson, you know, especially when you're dealing with uh, private deals and stuff like that. Cause typically a lot of my stuff is off the MLS, but you know, when it comes to private deals, there's just so many things that could make a deal go sour. Um, and so I guess my takeaway from that would basically be to always be following up. Um, and if you can, you know, close, close quick rather than later, because the longer, let's just hypothetically say, cause that was a pretty much turnkey type of deal. If you have a deal and it's tied up under contract, the sooner you can close the better, because once it's, once it's, once you close, that's, it's a done deal. It's already your house done. You start the project and move on. Um, you know, but I pushed that one out two months because it just had so many things on the go. Now, if I had some more better systems where, you know, maybe I'm not, 
acting as a general contractor on that one and I'm actually delegating that out different story now I'm like ah it's easy I just got to raise the capital well that's not easy either but I just have to raise the money and then you know we can away we go but yeah yeah there's always some lessons to extract once you make those mistakes right as long as it doesn't take us out of the game then whatever we're young just keep doing it again right for sure um, I had something a little bit, I guess, similar. It was like a deal that I missed out on. Uh, I'd say it's like one of my biggest mistakes um, while starting real estate. So this kind of happened. Um, I got offered an opportunity to invest in a six plex, and I just had to bring fifty grand. Uh, now I just say just fifty grand because at this point that's the cost of entry into like 20, 25 percent down. So for us now, fifty grand is just Hey, that's how much you need for a down payment. However, at the time, 50 grand was a lot more. Yeah. Uh, again, didn't really have as big of a portfolio. Wasn't really that good at raising capital yet. Like I wasn't attracting investors as much. Um, so I kind of just realized, hey, okay, maybe I can't have this deal and end up just passing out on it. Um, but one thing I did remember from this investor is that they had a really well put together quality investor package. So they had emailed me a package. They were very professional. I could see the numbers of everything. There are multiple exit strategies over the course of five and then 10 years. Um, so once I started raising capital, I actually followed up with this person. And I was like, hey, like, how did you make your investor package? Because I'm putting something together. I want to raise some capital as well for my deals. And kind of just explained to me, okay, here's the template. You can do it this way. Um, so I started asking, like, hey, how was that, that Six Flags deal that, was, uh, that you offered me, like, last year? Year forward now. Um, said, oh, it's going great. Here are the numbers you want to see. And then I looked at the numbers, and they were actually – cash flowing a lot more than they expected. So they were expecting to have all the money back by about five years, get the refinance and get your money out. Um, but they actually got their money back in two years. So like example, I put in the 50 grand, I would have gotten that back in two years. And then the next three years is all just profit. So they were each um, unit, I guess, um, or each investor that would get about a unit or two um, was basically earning about 25000 a year. Um, so it was a pretty sweet deal that I would have put on, and I would have been completely passive, right? It's not like the deals that we do now, where we're actually doing the renos, we're managing the teams. Um, there, it was we're just find the money, pass it off to the investor, and then I would have just been collecting checks until today. Um, so it's one of the deals that I kind of missed out on. And the lesson I found there was just, if you don't know, either spend like spend more time figuring out how to get that 50 grand um, and just get better at raising capital. Um, but also I did, like I broke one of my principles and had an every broke again, which I kind of had a broke mindset. Like I didn't have the 50 grand and I just accepted that I didn't have it. Or uh, <laughs> From the beginning, I should have been asking, how do I get that? How do I get 50 grand? How do I get 50,000? And then find out from there, um, which now is just, you raise the capital. You find people, friends, family that are willing to invest in you. Now it just seems so easy. Like it seems so simple. It's like, hey, we just follow the systems that we have, put out some marketing, kind of document our process. And then the money kind of just comes to us at this point. Um, but then I was like, I had no idea, right? So. Kind of absolutely up for that a little bit but then now it's kind of that fire under my butt to be like hey, if i don't have the money this is a really good deal we'll find a way yeah yeah when you're starting out i just feel like there's just so many there's so much things that you don't think is possible until you just do it that one time and it gives you that confidence right like for me now that i look back at that time i know for sure that i'll never well, I'll try my very best to not let a deal slip through my hands as, as, as much control I have. I'm going to use that, you know, to the best of my abilities to make sure that a deal goes through, especially something like that. Right. Like, you know, I did a lot of deals this year and looking back, that was like, you know, it was like the, it was like a high school thing and be like the girl that got away is the deal that got away, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I think that we definitely have a lot to learn still. 
there's going to be more mistakes. There's always mistakes to be made. It's just the nature of the business. There's nothing perfect, right? Yeah, as long as there's, like, as long as those mistakes we learn from them, doesn't take us like, fine. Um, but not to fail those mistakes, right? Like I think we're done this enough times that if we do make a mistake, it's like, hey, we're allowed to freak out maybe five minutes, um, but then after that, just find a solution. Yeah. Um... One thing that we were, we both been talking about, and I think this might actually be useful for other people who want to get into real estate or just entrepreneurship in general, but it's just kind of uh, making sure that you can keep your composure. Like when we go on those walks and we talk about like, man, we have all this stuff going on, but we don't really bat an eye just because it's like, well, there's always a way to figure things out, right? Um, there's always, it's more, more so just, I guess, the, your outlook on on things. It's either all crashing down or, it depends on how you perceive things, right? So, yeah, for sure. I have a friend uh, who always tells me, like, hey, is this going to matter in five years? <laughs> so, <laughs> not, right? Yeah. You will, but yeah. for the most part, usually those problems don't. Like, Yeah, for sure. Sweet. So hopefully people got value out of that a couple of our mistakes there. We do like to keep this podcast just a little short and sweet for everybody, kind of like extract a little bit of value, but we don't want to take up like two or three hours of your time. Um, people have been messaging us to kind of do longer podcasts and maybe that's something in the future. Um, just as you guys know that we are still doing deals right now. Um, oh, yeah. uh, part of our, I guess, our growing stage for our portfolio where we're trying to acquire more deals, get more rentals, do a little more flips and then still keep ourselves busy. Um, but in the future, like maybe we'll just do a whole podcast of just our stories or how we started we'll break down every single deal. I don't know, whatever offers you guys value. Um, so again, if this offered you value, make sure you guys do like and subscribe. It is on Spotify. Some of these videos will appear on YouTube. Um, don't forget to follow Denzel on Instagram. Denzel's Instagram is Denzel dot at Denzel dot action taker. Um, yeah, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Shameless plugs. <laughs> I'm at, uh, Patrick J. Hilario. And then, yeah, if there's any topics you guys want us to cover, usually pick one topic. Just like today was mistakes. Uh, last time was mentoring and coaching. And then, yeah, if you have any ideas, let us know. We'd love to chat about that and offer you guys some value. So, thanks again, Denzel. That was awesome. And we'll see you guys next time on Landlord Society. Take care. Thanks. Not gonna, Ooh. it's gonna pause.